Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, a compact sedan from MG, the 2019 MG6 1.5T Trophy, and a multi-purpose van from Maxxis, the 2019 G10 1.9L DSL 8T. We'll also have a glimpse of some of the latest automobile models and concept cars from around the world. This week, we have the 2020 Hyundai Kona Electric and the 2020 Aston Martin DBX. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two subcompact SUVs, the 2018 Ford EcoSport and the 2019 Honda HRV, together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry. We shall have the recently held launch of the 12th generation Toyota Corolla Altis on our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven-seater in style. All-new El Tiga. Debut. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from MG. Ever since Morris Garages Philippines re-entered the Philippine market under a new distributor, it also made its goal to improve its products and offerings. That includes the MG6. We have all about the trophy variant here on Car Review. Right off the bat, the exterior of the MG6 looks premium and edgy that it could be mistaken as a premium sedan. It's also worth noting that it boasts a few similarities to its sibling, the ZS. For one, it has the same iconic London Eye headlights and the Stardust grille. The front fascia also carries the trophy badge. Meanwhile, the silver accents around the windows and sills give a pop to its exterior. The two-tone 18-inch alloy wheels also make the MG6 stand out as it powers through the road. Other exterior features of the MG6 include a sunroof with anti-trap, manual sunroof shade, and dual exhaust pipes. Let's head inside the MG6. While the exterior is straightforward, the interior is over the top while maintaining its driver-friendly character. The two-toned red and black seats dashboard and panels give the MG6 an eye-catching and attractive cabin. More about the seats, the driver's seat comes available with 6-way electric adjust with lumbar support. 
Meanwhile, the rear seats come in four-way manual adjust. Another highlight of the interior of the MG6 is its flat bottom steering wheel, which is a nod to the brand's rich racing heritage, packed with multi-functional controls to make it more convenient for the driver. Join the ride. For added comfort and convenience, the MG6 comes with technology features such as a dual zone climate control, cruise control, active speed limiter, pressure monitoring system, electric folding side mirrors, and 12 volt sockets among others. When it comes to the infotainment system, the MG6 is equipped with an 8-inch touchscreen system with AM-FM radio, two USB ports, Bluetooth connectivity, and phone integration features. Meanwhile, great audio is enjoyable via six speakers. It's time to check the oily bits. Under the hood of the MG6 is a 1.5-liter turbocharged engine that is capable of producing 166 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. The engine is coupled with a 7-speed TST with manual tiptronic function. For safety and security, the MG6 comes with a lineup of features that ensure nothing less. It includes anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, electronic stability program, anti-theft system, and isofix among others. That's it for the MG6 1.5T Trophy variant, a car that has a lot to offer. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has anti-oxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph or visit Autoplus Sports Zentrium located along EDSA, across White Plains. Mitsubishi Expander. Ako po si Michael Kaliwag, labing dalawang taon ng patrol crew para sa Enlex Esitex. Bilang patrol crew, handa akong marap sa anumang di nasa ang sitwasyon. Naalala ko pa noon, 2009, Bagyong Ondoy, papatrol kami sa Enlex nang may nakita kami isang pamilya na natrap sa bubong. Kahit kailangan magpatrol, nagdesisyon kami na sagatin at iligtas sila. Kami ang NLEX SETEX Patrol Crew. Paagapay at katuwag nyo sa mas maayos na paglalakbay. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. 
my inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Welcome back to Auto Focus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. Maxxis Philippines has recently formally launched the G10 Assist Package in an event held at the Blue Leaf Events Pavilion in Taguig. Today, we launched a new variant of the Maxxis G10. We call it the Maxxis G10 Assist. It comes with a programmable swivel seat, specially designed to cater to the needs of the elderly, persons with disabilities, even persons with walking difficulties. Following the brand launch last June, wherein Maxxis Philippines was also introduced as the sixth automotive brand partner under Ayala Group's AC Industrials, Maxxis expands the versatility of the British-born brand's flagship vehicle, the G10 multi-purpose vehicle. It is powered by Euro 4 1.9-liter turbo diesel common rail direct injection engine, made into a six-speed automatic transmission that produces 150 PS of power and 350 newton meters of torque. For safety, the G10 meets global safety standards with integrated body structure, front and side airbags for the driver and front passenger, three-point seat belts on all seats, ISOFIX, front and rear parking sensors, and rear camera. According to Maxxis Philippines, the G10 Assist retains all these comfort, power, and safety features but adds a customized technological innovation that would make transporting the elderly and persons with disabilities so much easier and convenient. The G10 Assist now is a programmable swivel lifting seat at the second row that can be operated via remote control or through mobile phone using an iOS app. It has a position memory function, path recovery function, path obstacle sensor, door interlock, low power detection and warning, mechanical manual function, and anti-tip protection. We feel that there's an underserved market for those people who would want to bring their, all their family members along together in their travels and in their adventures. And this variant of our G10 basically caters to that need, especially for those families who have relatives who have difficulty walking. The G10 Assist basically is equipped with a programmable swivel seat that lets people get in and out of the vehicle comfortably and at ease. It is offered at a price of 1,680,000 pesos and the Assist device as a dealer option is available at an additional cost of 399,800 pesos. It's available today as we speak so people can buy it today. Automobile Central Enterprise Inc. President Felipe Estrella said that with the G10 Assist, found members with disabilities become more empowered and mobile. We'll have more exciting variants and products coming soon, so please watch out for it. In the meantime, kindly visit our website at www.maxus.com.ph or our Facebook page or Instagram account. The Caltex Havoline Auto Pro Workshop has added another site to its fast-growing network with the opening of its latest service center in Banawi, Quezon City. So we are very excited. This is our uh, sixth Auto Pro site in the country. And we are actually planning to open as many as 50 sites before the end of the year. So we're very excited and we are welcoming everybody to this grand launch. As everybody would know, Banawi is perhaps the center of auto services in the country, right? So this is probably for many generations have been the uh, destination for car enthusiasts. So having one facility in Banawe is actually making our services available to consumers, especially car enthusiasts. Owned and operated by Transit Asia Auto Services Co., the Havoline Auto Pro Workshop assures car owners that their vehicles will get quality products and services with a professional setup that makes customers feel welcome the moment they arrive. The opening also brings added convenience to the everyday driver. This is in partnership with Transit Asia uh, Services Company. They're actually providing a comprehensive services to the motorist. Aside from the quick lube services, they do preventive maintenance checkup. They have tire services. They have wheel balancing services, among many other things. So 
I think for our consumers, they'll be delighted. Once they come over, they'll see a fully renovated facility that makes them feel welcome as soon as they come in. We in Caltex, with our program Haveline Auto Pro, will be providing training for the mechanics here so that they can provide preventive maintenance checkup for our motorists. At the same time, they will also be able to handle the customers with their concerns so that customers will feel the peace of mind when they bring the cars here. It's like uh, leaving the facility with a clean bill of health for their cars. Haveline Auto Pro Workshop program not only operates in the Philippines but also in other countries in the region. It is tailored for quick lube and automotive service business owners who want to partner with a global brand to gain credibility as a preferred operator. It offers the right expertise and resources to grow and protect their business without the franchisee and royalty fees. Caltech said they are expanding this program as they share the same objective with its trade partners and that is to bring more value to the customers. We want this facility to be replicated all over the country. We're targeting to open as many as 50 sites all over the country so that more consumers can enjoy the services and the quality products of uh, Havoline. I'd like to invite all our uh, motorists, our customers, come over to Transit Asia Services Company in partnership with Havoline Auto Pro uh, here in Banawe Corner Santa Rosa Street here in Manresa, Quezon City. Come over and enjoy promotions and great service. Ford Motor Company has welcomed new Managing Director P.K. Umashankar as Managing Director for Ford Philippines. When I came into this market, I was uh, in July of this year. It's not the first time I knew about the market because I was already uh, managing the ASEAN operations as head of customer service. So I had already an engagement with the market and I'm pretty close with the dealer group in terms of the expectations of the dealer group as well as expectations of the market. May not be first hand as I would love to, but yes, I was aware of the, of the situations here. And from my understanding, Philippine is a very important market within the ASEAN group for us. And, and this is a market where Ford is one of the strong brands. And this is one of the market where Ranger is a very strong business and within that Raptor has a flagship brand for us. So overall, it's a very important market within ASEAN group for us. Uma Shankar has relocated to Manila and continues to report directly to Ford ASEAN President Yukon Thorn Vicky Usad Kosin. In his new role, Uma Shankar would be responsible to continue driving Ford's momentum in the Philippines, including sustaining the success of Ford's nearly fully refreshed vehicle lineup in the market, continuing the ongoing expansion of the Ford dealership network, and further enhancing the after-sales experience, including driving a more competitive cost of ownership structure for Ford customers. In terms of Ford performance in this market, we are satisfied at the way we are performing at this point in time. In the segments we are present, we are delivering the expectations by and large. We believe in the segments we play, uh, we are doing pretty impressive, I must say. As far as the Ford brand is concerned, we honestly believe that we should play to win in the segments we participate. And Ford's global commitment is towards pickups and trucks. And as I already said, in the pickup space, Ranger defines the pickup industry per se. With its products that are embracing the lifestyle needs of the pickup customer, with Raptor being the halo within the Ranger segment, we already are in a position to strongly endorse on what Raptor is ushering into the Ranger space and Ranger as a whole into the pickup space. And continuing the strength of the pickup segment at the back of the Ranger will be a key priority for us. Everest is a very important contributor within the medium traditional utility, MTU space as we call it. And we are already as a product in the MTU space, our class leading in our feature content. We are, we get in six airbags as a standard. We bring in feature content around safety, feature content around power and performance, class leading performance with the two liter bi-turbo, as well as features that are functional need of the consumers, like a hands-free power lift gate. We continue to embrace and deliver on what the customers expect. An EcoBoost engine within EcoSport is another testimony to make sure customers are deliver on their expectations. And these are the segments we participate in in the mass brands and we are pretty reasonable in the performance in that space. Overall market share is a fallout of how we deliver in these segments we participate in at this point in time.
Toyota Alabang, one of the first six Toyota dealerships in the country in the 1990s, recently celebrated its 30th anniversary. Today, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary in the industry. So we opened way back September 15, 1989 in almost Las Piñas area. So when we celebrated our 25th anniversary, we moved to a new location in Filinvest City, Alabang. And then we opened this service facility last year because we saw the increased demand for service and repair. So since the place is big enough, this is where we're celebrating together with our team members and our customers. We would like to support the needs of our customers here in the South. No? So we cover the southern part of Metro Manila. And we hope that over the years, we continue to evolve to try to uh, service all the needs of our customers. To celebrate this important milestone, Toyota Motor Philippines executives headed by President Satoru Suzuki as well as Toyota Alabang Inc. executives, employees, friends, and media gathered together for a night of celebration. During the event, Toyota Alabang proudly showcased the new Supra and the recently launched Corolla Altis. Toyota also held the search for Miss Toyota Alabang in the same event. We'd like to invite everybody to visit us uh, in our main showroom in Toyota Alabang, Phil Invest City Alabang, and also come and visit us here uh, in our Toyota Alabang service center in Las Piñas. We hope that you would come and see the all-new Toyota Supra, also the all-new Corolla Altis, which was recently launched. Coming from a long hiatus, Honda City Club Philippines held a meetup that gathered club members, brand partners, and members of the motoring media in one place to celebrate. HACP started in 2009. It started with a small group of 13 guys who got together on Chicot.com. And then it started out with that, and then it branched out to its own website and actual group in 2009. Now, HACP is almost 40,000 strong on Facebook. It's always our point to be active as a club, so it's not just an online community. A lot of the things that's happening now are online communities, but we make it a point that people in the club actually get together and get to meet each other and get to spend time together. As one of the brand partners, Speed Lab picked three lucky car owners who got to have their cars reflashed. Normally, our GEBs are more than just bringing people together in one place, having fun and spending time together. We want to make it more meaningful to our members. We usually invite our club partners to talk about their products or their industry so that our members can be more knowledgeable in their specific fields. We had a Speed Lab talk about engine performance. Next month, hopefully, we have a bigger uh, celebration. We have more people coming in and we have more people helping out the club. Patriot Tires, an American brand producing tires, has set foot in the Philippines. As you know, we're uh, Philippine agents for uh, Black Rhino Wheels and we're constantly looking for tires that can match the market that we're catering to. And so we found a good brand and tread pattern that we know the market will like. So we have the highway terrain, we have the all terrain, and then the rugged terrain and the mud terrain. To celebrate this arrival, Patriot Tires through its local distributor, YHI Philippines, has recently partnered with Black Rhino Wheels Philippines, putting together two major aftermarket name brands together. According to Black Rhino Wheels, Patriot was the perfect fit for their need to offer a mid-range tire brand for customers, which are a good match for their product portfolio. Patriot Tires offers a wide range of tires for on-road and off-road applications. A highlight of Patriot Tires is the Rugged Terrain Tire, which is a unique classification between all-terrain tires and mud-terrain tires. The rugged terrain tires give a quiet and smooth ride, but also the capability to go on rough terrain like a pure empty tire. This model also comes in two sidewall patterns, so users can choose the design that suits his taste. This uh, new rugged terrain segment is uh, gaining ground because for the buyer who wants the aggressiveness of the mud tire, but don't want the road noise or the humming on the highway, this new rugged terrain segment solves that problem. Major tires are now available at the Black Rhino Wheels main showroom in San Juan and also in the Black Rhino Outlet store in Paranaque. Please visit us. We'll be promoting Patriot Tires in our Black Rhino Wheels Facebook and Instagram pages and also in Concept One pages. Please communicate, talk to us, and PM us for your inquiries. Thank you.
Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine, takes another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me, my kind of jam, My passion, my blend of coffee, my inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Ordering today is now on the web. Watch this episode or other past episodes of the country's longest-running motoring program any time of the day by logging on to our website, motoringtoday.ph. Motoring Today is now online. Just the click away. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Be part of the 2019 2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph/slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Mitsubishi Expander. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's Head to Head, our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category. Another episode of Head to Head, another pair of cars that will go bumper to bumper when it comes to their respective features and specs. We have two big nameplates this time, the Ford EcoSport EcoBoost Titanium and the Honda HRV 1.8 liter RS Navi CVT. Watch this. Our first agenda, take a look at the respective powertrains of our featured cars. The Honda HRV is powered by a 1.8 liter SOHC IP Tech engine that is capable of giving out 140 horsepower and 172 newton meters of torque. The engine is made into a continuously variable transmission with Honda's Earth Dream technology, which sends all power to front wheels. Meanwhile, under the hood of the Ford EcoSport is a 1.0-liter turbocharged inline-3 EcoBoost unit that produces 123 horsepower and 170 Nm of torque. These generous figures are paired up with a 6-speed automatic transmission. This engine layout is what makes it the titanium. Let's have a tour of the exterior of the two cars. Being a facelifted model, the HRV's front fascia features a bold and wide U-shaped grille matched with an iconic honeycomb pattern. On top of that, the LED daytime running lights and headlamps as well as the taillights match the revised bumpers that come in glossy black accents. The character lines that hug the body of the HRV looks polished. Another thing that highlights the exterior of the HRV is the 17-inch alloy wheels that make it more of a sight to behold on the road. 
On the other hand, the front fascia of the EcoSport features these redesigned fog lights and headlights. At the sides, you will find these subtle curves that add emphasis to the EcoSport's body. Over at the rear, there's nothing much going on aside from the usual. Other recognizable exterior features of the EcoSport EcoBoost Titanium are these unique A pillars, which create curves at the bottom. They are obviously positioned to highlight the striking edges of the car's hood, giving it a sporty vibe. Additionally, its exterior is made more exciting with the 17-inch alloy wheels. Next, let's hop inside the two cars. The inside of the HRV is simple and boasts a direct-to-the-point dashboard. The imported areas are highlighted by these piano black plastic inserts. Honda also improved the seats of HRV and gave it a leather material. The front seats come in manual with seat height adjuster, while the rear seats are reclining. When it comes to the infotainment system, the HRV is equipped with a Kenwood 7 inch touchscreen infotainment with navigation. It is available in Bluetooth, USB, built in Wi Fi, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto connectivity. Stepping inside the EcoSport, you will be greeted by an all black material. From the dashboard down to the seats, everything is wrapped in black leather. The cabin offers ample space for the driver and passengers, and there's even extra space for luggage if it's going to be a long adventure with family or friends. Moreover, a panoramic sunroof is present, given that this is the top-of-the-line variant and it's the only one that has it. But the real showstopper is its infotainment system. Since this is the top-of-the-line variant, it comes equipped with an 8-inch SYNC 3 touchscreen integrated with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Audio is courtesy of 7 speakers. When it comes to safety and security, both cars are loaded with features that keep the driver and passengers safe and secured through any drive. For the EcoSport, it is equipped with Ford standard features such as an anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, stability control, isofix, and 6 airbags. Meanwhile, the HRV also comes with reliable safety features such as 6 airbags, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, isofix, immobilizer, and vehicle stability assist among others. You witnessed two huge nameplates battle it out on our head-to-head -head grounds. Those were the Ford EcoSport and the Honda HRV, our featured vehicles. We hope you enjoy. More about the automobile here in Autofocus as we usher in our segment featuring the autos of the world, spotlighting concept cars as well as newly launched and about to be launched automobile models from around the world. For exciting viewing in this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine, we have the 2020 Hyundai Kona Electric. Let's watch this. Hyundai's 2020 Kona Electric SUV will offer an enhanced premium navigation system and a battery warmer system. Kona Electric rides on an all-new CUV platform and is Hyundai's first compact electric crossover for the U.S. market, appealing to customers with active, eco-focused lifestyles of all kinds. Kona Electric's exterior styling features voluminous, aggressive body styling complemented by a low and wide stance for great looks and confident handling in a variety of urban and adventure-oriented driving environments. The 2020 Kona Electric models are produced in Ulsan, Korea, with availability in California and in the ZEV-focused states in the western and northeastern regions of the U.S. market. The Kona Electric utilizes a standard Level 2 onboard charging system capable of a 7.2 kilowatt rate of charge for rapid recharging characteristics. Kona Electric's estimated range is 258 miles, meeting the varying needs of owner lifestyles. An 80% charge can be achieved in 54 minutes with a level 3 quick charge of 0-80% charge at 100kW charging capability using the SAE combo charging port while a 7.2kW level 2 charger takes 9 hours and 35 minutes. This fast charging capability is standard on the Kona Electric. For charging convenience, the charging port is located in the front grille area for head and parking ease whenever charging is needed. For 2020, a battery warmer system is standard on limited models and above. The system helps prevent excessively long battery charging intervals in cold temperatures. In addition, in winter mode, the battery warmer can minimize battery power losses due to low winter temperatures.
Enlex Viaje Tips presents Healthy Road Trip. It's time for that much-awaited vacation, but here are a few things to watch out for. Sitting for long periods of time can form blood clots in your body like in the legs. To avoid that, stop for a quick break, get up, and move around to get your blood pumping. Car air conditioners speed up dehydration, so make sure to drink water frequently. Lastly, while driving, protect your eyes from the sun by wearing UV blocking sunglasses. And for a smoother trip up north, you can now drive all the way to your destination with one RFID. Get your Easy Trip RFID sticker now. It's fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back to Autofocus. Our special feature is next. Toyota Motor Philippines has recently launched the full model change of the much coveted Corolla Altis. It's the first in its lineup to feature three Toyota's latest technologies in one variant. We have the highlights and sidelights of the grand launch event here on Special Feature. Watch this. Cannot wait for you to see and experience the all new Corolla Altis. We're here at Grand Hyatt Manila and we are launching the all new. Corolla Altis. It is the 12th generation. This car is like the best selling in the world. And today's launch is about a new technology. We're introducing the first ever hybrid variant of the Corolla. And it also comes with cool technology like Toyota Safety Sense and Toyota New Global Architecture. inch multi-information display we have also changed the dashboard and the panel for the leather seats it's also improved and then for the top of the line variant it comes with eight way power adjust support and a lumbar support system as well so this uh, 1.8 uh, variant comes with our Toyota Safety Sense, which offers five cool safety features. It has pre-collision system, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert, lane tracing alert, and also automatic high beam. The 12th generation Corolla Altis will be introduced in five variants. The top of the line is the 1.8 hybrid. And then we have four other petrol-based conventional 
liter engine. It comes with a V-grade automatic transmission, the G-grade also an automatic transmission, and the G-grade in manual transmission and the E-manual transmission as well. So this one comes in six new shades. The new one is our banner color, the Celestite Gray, white pearl, attitude black. We also have red mica, silver, and freedom white for the G and E variants. It starts at 999,000 pesos, all the way up to 1.58 million pesos for the hybrid variant. Actually, we worked so hard to make the hybrid variant more affordable and more accessible so that a lot more Filipinos can enjoy this technology. This is a super cool technology. It helps Mother Earth. It's very safe. It's very dependable. You know Corolla from way, way back. You trust this brand. So please come visit our dealers to see the all-new 12th generation Corolla Altis. Kyoto Motor Philippines is on a road with successive model launches. This time with the 12th generation Corolla Altis, which now comes in a hybrid electric variant. The brand promises a lot more are in store in the future, so be in the lookout for that. And up next is another exciting feature in autos of the world. This time around the 2020 Aston Martin DBX. Let's watch this. With DBX's unveiling drawing closer, Aston Martin's first SUV has entered the closing stages of the most comprehensive test regime of any Aston Martin and today. The luxury British mark can confirm the beating heart of the most versatile product in its illustrious history. With extensive everyday real-world driving and high-performance track evaluation taking place at locations worldwide, including the brand's two key engineering centers at Silverstone UK and the Nürburgring Germany, Chief Engineer Matt Becker's team has focused their development work to ensure the broad dynamic capability required of DBX. While conducting durability testing at the demanding Nürburgring race circuit, the DBX has delivered cornering speeds on par with the brand's most focused sports car, Vantage. While achieving braking figures greater than the Mark Super GT, DBS Super Ligera. This brutal combination of performance for an SUV has already seen Aston Martin's engineering team regularly achieve sub 8 minute Norge Life tap times during their regular testing regime. DBX will feature a 4.0 liter twin turbo V8 tuned to deliver the acceleration of a modern GT. While recognizable from its application in the brand's existing Vantage and DB11 sports cars, the DBX's V8 engine surpasses the performance credentials of these V8-powered models delivering 550 PS and 700 Nm of torque. High-speed testing has already proven the DBX to repeatedly exceed 180 miles per hour, with final top speed and acceleration figures being set within the closing stages of the testing process. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive.
part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate here in Autofocus as we have our second car review this week. The center of this car review is a vehicle that made waves when it first arrived in the country simply for the fact that it's fresh and is something that offers more than a typical MPV does. We're talking about the new Maxus G10. Find out more about it here. Watch this. <laughs> Basing on the exterior design of the Maxus G10, it could be easy to say that it is just another China-built car, but not until you look closer. It exudes a modern and clean look, one that is fitting for an MPV. Up front, these projector halogen headlights take on the spotlight. In addition, front and rear fog lights are also present to provide more visibility for the driver when needed. Over at the rear, you will find a set of LED tail lights. Moreover, the dual sliding doors make it easier for passengers to go in and out of the G10. It's also worth mentioning that these sliding doors make the G10 considered as a minivan. Other exterior features of the G10 include front intermittent plus rear wiper, an electrically adjustable exterior mirror with side turn lamp. Pop it all off with 16-inch alloy wheels and the G10 is ready to go. Meanwhile inside, being a 9-seater MPV, the G10 offers a generous amount of space for the passengers. For one, the four captain seats in the second and third rows are comfortable for the passengers to sit on during long drives across cities and rural roads. They are also available with recline and slide options. The last row on the other hand comes with a bench seat that can seat three passengers and is available with 60-40 configuration. The seats are wrapped in leather fabric material. More about the seats, the driver's seat comes in 10-way configuration, while the front passenger power adjust seats comes in 4-way. The interior of the G10 is likewise filled with features for added convenience such as cruise control, driver and front passenger power windows, front and rear reading lights, 220-volt power supply, and front and rear air conditioning system which keeps everybody cool and fresh during road trips. A 4-spoke leather multifunction steering wheel is also available for the driver's convenience. For the infotainment system of the G10, a 7-inch touchscreen radio that is available with USB and Bluetooth connectivity. Sound is enjoyable through 6 speakers that wrap around the corners of the G10. Now let's take a closer look at what's under the hood of the G10. The G10 is powered by a 1.9-liter Euro 4 CRDI turbo engine that is capable of giving out 150 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. The engine is mated to a 6-speed automatic transmission. Meanwhile, all the noises and vibration is handled by the suspension setup of the G10 comprised of a McPherson at the front and a 5-link coil spring at the rear. This setup makes the G10 ready for any condition. When it comes to safety and security, the G10 is loaded with features that ensure nothing less. Available safety and security features are anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, ISO fix, 3-point seat belt on all seats, front and rear parking sensors, reverse parking camera, immobilizer, and 6 airbags. The all-new Maxxis G10 9-seater is available at 1,680,000 pesos.
That was all about the Maxus G10. A newcomer indeed, but not one to miss out. Hi, this is Sydney from Speed Lab, and today I'm going to teach you how to look at a dyno chart, read and understand it. Spend enough time on the internet and online and you'll probably come across one of these when talking about performance numbers. This is called the dyno chart and this is the most effective and straightforward way to prove that something makes power or not when it comes to engine modifications. A dyno chart basically tells you how much power and torque your car makes. That's it. It's very simple. It does not tune, it does not add power, it does not do anything except measure the power, horsepower of your car. It's basically a glorified treadmill for the car. So in every dyno chart, there's always two axes. One is the x-axis, which is always the RPM of the car being measured. So in this case, it's a Montero, so it's from 2,000 to 4,300. Then the y-axis here has horsepower and torque. For the Dynapack dyno chart, they split it into two. But later, we'll review another popular dyno chart that you've seen, which is from DynoJet. So these lines represent the number of runs in one dyno session. For the Dynapack one, each file can contain up to six runs, which is represented by these six colors. We'll start with the horsepower side. Which that's what everybody keeps asking, and that's what everybody sort of understands a little bit more. The first run is this red line, which is almost always here the baseline power, which means car comes into the shop, nothing has been done, we put it here, we take a power reading of what it is. Whether it's stock or slightly modified, it's called the baseline because we haven't done anything yet. Then subsequent runs, obviously the expected is you should get more power, which is why you're having it dyno tuned in the first place or having modifications done. And this is our second run. This is uh, a historical one which we already did a few weeks ago with the uh, ECU reflash. So from here, you can see the peak power at stock is around 155, which is indicated here. This is our power after reflash, which is 181. Note that the RPM is pretty much the same, 3,400 RPM. So that's the correct way to compare power actually or anything. It has to be on the same RPM scale. Then this is what we did just now with a full exhaust installed. So we're up to 219 horsepower for this old 2009 3.2 Montero. Torque is the same way. You read the graph here. So with diesels, it always starts off high, then goes lower. But as you can see, we have a pretty big, almost 150 foot pound of torque increase here from 312 to 446. That's pretty big, considering, just for reference, your average 7.8 only makes 100 foot-pounds of torque. Most people always quote when they get into these internet arguments is, Oh, my car makes 100 horsepower because that's what the brochure says. You are only partly right. It's 100 horsepower at a certain RPM. Like for this Montero, when people ask how much power did you make? Oh, stop, we make 155 at 3,500 RPM. This is important because if you look at the chart here at the bottom, you're only making 120 horses at 2,250 RPM. This part and this part almost nobody mentions. And here, towards the end of the RPM graph, you're actually only making 90 horsepower at red line of a diesel Montero. This is the number that everybody's most interested in, but this only tells part way of the story. Because here we have pr practically 155 to 218, that's about 65 horses. But at here, if we take these two points, it's actually closer to 60 horsepower. What you're most concerned about is the area in between the two charts that you're looking at. This one here. This is only one point, but you have to take the whole chart and the whole dyno as a whole. Same thing with torque. It starts off big, then gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you go down to red line. So next time when you want to argue with your friends, you should always ask, okay, horsepower at something RPM. It always has to have that because power by nature is defined as work over time. Torque is the work that you're doing, the amount of force that you're giving. Power is time, meaning how much force you apply over a period of time. And that period of time is from 2000 to 4,300 RPM. And the M in the RPM is minutes. So revolutions per minute. That's your measure of time. 
So power always has to have a length of time and the time component in between. It cannot just be, it's not a static thing like, oh, I make this much power now. Yes, and but what about a second later? What about five seconds later? Okay, that's for the Dyna chart from a Dyna pack. The Dynapack is actually a brand of dynamometer. The same way that you have an Orion brand ruler, you have a Century brand ruler, and a Stanley brand ruler. Different dynos have different brands, but they all measure the same thing. It's horsepower. And then this is another type of dyno. This is from DynoJet, which is you also see a lot on the internet. And this is their dyno chart. As you can see, it's also the same. You have RPM here at the bottom. You have power here at the Y-axis. But you have torque here at the other y-axis. What they do is they intersperse it with each other. Same thing also, you can have multiple runs represented by multiple colors. So this is two runs. Uh, first run is red, second run is blue. So this is the line for power, these two. Then this is the line for torque. Same thing also, there's a pointer here that you can put here and the values here will change. Also, maximum power at, it will show you here, 180 and 146 mm, horsepower at this RPM here, at 6,000 RPM. Then it will show you also max torque, which is somewhere here at 5,000 mm, RPM. So once again, you read it the same way, power at RPM, torque at RPM. And as you can see, when you're only at 2,500, you're only doing about 20 horse, then it gradually gets bigger, 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 until red line. Same thing with torque, this is a gasoline engine, so your maximum torque is made somewhere here in the middle. So some torque, some torque, some torque, big torque, big torque, then torque drops off. Now, are there other brands of dynos in the Philippines? Yes, there are. If your car comes with a printout from one of these, it is unquestioned what the numbers are. Okay, so that's how you read a dyno chart, whether it's from DynoJet or DynaPack. And if you go to the SpeedLab Facebook page, I do post a lot of these things. This one, sometimes this one, because we do have a DynoJet also. And with the correspond explanations, what these lines also mean. So yes, check it out, so you, you might learn a thing or two. And that's all the focus this week. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, we hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Until the next time, this has been Ray Louis Gamboa. <music>